it's great to have that day where you have something you like. But it's better that the majority of your diet can take care of that one day or right. those two days. So right. you should be able to take care of that waste. The key to life is moderation. moderation. There you go. You know what I'm saying? There so. you go. Welcome to Expeditiously. I'm your host, Tip T.I. Harris. Uh, although uh, every month is Black History Month, this month being the month that is overtly celebrated for black history uh we cannot leave out the illustrious career or life of dr sibby uh dr sibby i know most of you just find out about him when nipsey said he was going to do the documentary but he's a pathologist herbalist biochemist and naturalist he had studied Uh, and personally observe herbs in North America, Central and South America, Africa, and the Caribbean, and develop a unique approach and methodology to healing the human body with herbs, naturally. Um, Firmly rooted in over 30 years of experience, he was born in Honduras, came to America, and practiced healing in the United States. Now, in the 80s, uh, Dr. Sebi was charged with two counts of practicing medicine without a license after he placed ads in a local newspaper claiming to be able to cure AIDS and other diseases as well. Uh, of course, he was acquitted because there was no evidence that he had actually made a medical diagnosis of his patients. Um, in May 16, however, he was arrested in Honduras for money laundering and died there in police custody. I guess with us today, his daughter, Kelly Bowman. She has served as an herbal lifestyle counselor and practical nurse for more than 23 years as a celebrity herbal counselor. In the Los Angeles area, she grew up working with TV, film, and music clientele for her family's company, The Fig Tree, and Dr. Sebi's office under the guidance and support of her father, Dr. Sebi Alfredo Bowman. Currently, Kelly is open Sebi's Daughters in Buckhead, Atlanta, um, in honor of her father, Dr. Sebi's legacy. Uh, we welcome her here to Expeditiously. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having us. Now, uh, in addition to Miss Miss Bowman, we also have Isaiah Bowman. Isaiah. Uh, Learn from his grandfather, Dr. Sebi, on how to heal disease. He's turned health into a lifestyle trend. His company, Dietary Resolutions, is based in Los Angeles. And for the past few years, many of his clients have helped him coin the phrase CMOS Gang. Since his appearance on The Breakfast Club, Charlemagne the God has been vo- a vocal advocate for his products, especially CMOS and Male Balance. Thanks, Isaiah, man, for pulling up, man. Hey, I appreciate this tip. You know, we've been supposed to get together for a long time. Yeah, so. man, we've this been talking honor. for a long time. And, and, and Miss Bowman has, you know, <laughs> been an avid supporter of the Trap Music Museum. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And I thank you for the unlimited trap ability. (laughs) (laughs) I I enjoy it. And listen, hey, I appreciate what you do for the community. Man. It's big and it spreads. I, I appreciate being able to. Yeah, it's raw and it's beautiful and it's strengthening. And so when I go, I take one section at a time and I enjoy myself. And thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. It's a, it's an absolute pleasure to even be in a position to be able to do the things that we know need to be done for for our our community, our culture, and our generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the first time I saw you there in the museum was uh it may have been the Nipsey unveiling of his exhibit. Yeah, and thank you for that invitation. I really appreciate it. Not many people knew we were here. Yeah. And when you got when I got that invitation from you, it was so special. And I enjoyed looking at um the beautiful art that was presented for Nipsey. He was an incredible person. He had a lot of courage in his life. Right on. And, and, I, and that's what I'm feeling um, from what you've created is that you have a lot of feeling and passion behind you have uh, what you have there. And so when it came to that exhibit, I was blown away. If, if people haven't seen it, they need to go see it. Yes. It, it was amazing. That's it amazing was a beautiful place. day. 
Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I really, I, I'm flattered. I'm flattered um, and humbled just, you know, that, that the consideration and the, the, the reception is so warm from the community. Mm -hmm. We only planned on having the Trap Music Museum open for a month or two, you know, it was just, you know, it's supposed to be like a pop-up, you know what I mean? However, mm -hmm. the demand of the people had, you know, they, they won't allow, I think they'll burn the building down if we try and close. I believe yeah. that, lines, <laughs> lines upon yeah. lines upon lines. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. But Isaiah, we, we've been supposed to get together for quite some time as well. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? We link, you know, running the streets and, you know, having mutual acquaintances, running in the same circles. Yeah. And uh, I, th I thank you now for, for coming in here and imparting your wisdom along with your auntie with the expeditiously uh listeners yes. now can y'all tell me uh what was it that made you guys both so there's two generations and what made you both follow in dr sebi's footsteps well for me as dr sebi's oldest grandson um and just being around the business you know running around as a little boy playing with different herbs, it really inspired me to really want to take this on on a different level to help my culture because my culture is very ill from a lot of different things, from the food, right. from the drugs, from the lean, it's killing us. Yeah. So it really- By design. By design. Yeah. It's all by design. And it really want, I really wanted to be a voice for my, culture right and left eye really inspired me as well mm. from my grandfather you know working with her and healing her and helping her on her journey of healing mm. and when she was working with hip-hop like in her ninth day when she came to our office i was like wow you really look good she was like i have that cmos glow huh i said yeah she was like i want everyone in hip-hop to know who your grandfather is and mm. i was like wow so her passing was very tragic to me. And when she passed, I really wanted to keep that torch alive, you know, with her trying to fulfill her dream on helping hip hop get healthy. Mm. So that's what really inspired me to really want to take on this journey of healing. Now, now that is a generation one generation removed from your generation, what made you take on the responsibility? Because it's hard to father to to follow in a father's footsteps and to, you know, uh, maintain the integrity of the family business, if you will. That's a huge undertaking and a huge responsibility. What made you take that on? It is a huge responsibility, and it's a huge undertaking. T.I., let me tell you something. It takes a lot of courage. But I learned from a man who was profound in my life. I love my father. I look just like him, and it was hard to escape that. I think I'm the only daughter that does. <laughs> I am one of the older daughters, and, uh, you know, as a young girl, you don't want to look like your father because that's looking like a man. However. That's what my daughter did. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of that, and she'll gain that, your daughter, what was beautiful about that is that uh, being with him and having that close relationship with him, um, I knew that my journey, and he knew that my journey would lead here. Uh, as I grew up, he shared so much, mm. and you want to share with others. And so for me, uh, I went from uh, the only one who has an American name and in I like that because mm. it's very unique. Mm -hmm. And I look like him, which was also unique. But our relationship had such a symmetry. And walking in those footsteps or walking with him, I consider it walking with him. And what he taught deserves to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. And so at the time that my dear poppy died, uh, Dr. Sabi didn't only pass away, but so did my father. Yeah. So that link was very difficult. And they were one and the same sometimes. But... Actually, I'm sitting next to my nephew here, and uh, the Nick Cannon uh, special came up after Nipsey's death. Mm -hmm. And I had been left since he died in 2016 with the thought of how am I going to go on in a way that honors him. So 
I had been seeing clients like I normally do, but when my nephew had partnered with Nick to see what they can do and support that particular documentary, I knew it was time to have courage for my family. Right. I knew it was time to make that step. So with all the knowledge I had, the nursing background, it was time to step up and be that for what I needed and what he taught me, but what also that my family needed. And I want to shout out my nephew right here. He's been in the game 11 years, and happy anniversary, sweetheart. I appreciate that. I I love my family, and and we're a very close family. So it was time for us to just get this together and keep moving forward with what we know he would want us to do, and that's to help others, educate others so that they can educate their families. Mm. Now, your last names are Bowman, correct? Yes. Uh, so where does the name Dr. Sebi come? And I know I've been saying Sebi, but I'm from Atlanta. Y'all got to excuse me. But where, <laughs> where does Dr. Sebi, where does the name Sebi come from? What does it, does it mean something specific? He was actually named by someone. They gave him that name because he was such a, uh, an incredible healer in Africa. Mm. And that name was actually given to him. Yeah. Mm. And Sebi means ever-changing. Wow. And it is an honored name. So when he was given that honor, he kept it yeah. because he was moving in a way that it just ignited energy uh, and it ignited health. And so when that name, he knew that was the name. Mm. He knew that was the journey. So. Mm. That's amazing. I know you guys have um, very strong opinions on this, which is why I'm going to ask you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? the major things plaguing our community are and like depriving us from truly living well? What's really destroying our society tip is the food. Mm. Fast food, junk food, commercials. Right after the Breakfast Club, a lot of people transitions over to a plant-based diet. Yeah. But yeah. then, poof, Popeye's chicken sandwich went crazy. <laughs> so when I saw this and people posting this sandwich, and I'm looking at this, we're still behind. Because that sandwich doesn't have any nutritional value. Right. So why would you want to waste your money on something like that? It's very detrimental, it's acidic, and it's not good for our biological makeup. Mm. So why destroy your temple with that poison? Mm-hmm. I mean, I concur. Now, speaking on behalf of uh, the listeners, because I, you know, as the voice of the people, have to look at it from both angles. Although I have given up chicken, beef, turkey, pork, I don't, I only do fish, Thanks. you know, which they also have informed me isn't the best either. But speaking on behalf of the people, you, you say why, you know, disrupt your temple with it. I think they would argue because it tastes so damn good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that thug passion in your diet that you just can't give up. You know what I'm saying? I know what's up. Yeah, so <laughs> how would you, how, how do we kind of encourage them to overcome the thought of why they can't give it up and walk them toward how they can? All right, well, the first thing we need to know tip is that we are the sum of our experiences. Mm-hmm. So when we look way back in what our mothers fed us and our mother's mothers fed us, there, there's a routine here. Right. And in our neighborhoods, how do we know? Who was there to bring our food with us? Who was there to tell us that we need to be introduced to those things in our diet that promote health? Mm. We were looking for feeding the soul, right. feeling good through that uh, meal that our mother gave us. So when we look at how do we do better, well, we didn't even know we was doing bad first. Right. So one of the things I, I talk about with clients since the Breakfast Club, that was a wonderful platform, but let me tell you something about Atlanta, what I love about it, is that people are open, and we uh, this, this here ground here has such history about growing vegetables. Mm. And see, if you talk to some of the... Uh, older members who've been here in in the communities, they were used to growing their own vegetables. Mm. 
Mm. Where did we go? How did we leave that in Atlanta? How, where did we go? Because that was what was feeding us. Right. But how do we do better? We got to go back to old school. Big Mama ain't here. I think that's why they call me auntie. <laughs> but Big Mama is gone. And I remember that, you know, where you got her cooking peas on the side. Right. And we have bell peppers and peppers uh, out there in the garden, something yeah. to make us feel better there. But we really got to look back to see where we came from. Because think about it, Tip. When was it that we had GMO and organic? Didn't we just have vegetables at one time? Right. Yeah, it was, there was our face value. There right. you go. You what know, happened? I mean, food was supposed to be uh, like fruit. It was supposed right. to be real fruit. Exactly. Uh, I think that somewhere down the line when big business came into play mm. and the opportunity to make a couple million off of some organic or, you know, natural, I should say, watermelon. Mm -hmm. Pales in comparison to the opportunity to make a hundred million right. <laughs> off of, you know, whatever kind of watermelon they're making right now. Uh, and I think that it's harder to find natural food than it is to go out, and especially from our communities. Mm -hmm. Most of our communities are food deserts anyway. Yes. Mm -hmm. So someone who has to spend the lion's share of the time out of their week mm -hmm. working to be able to afford enough food from wherever to put on the table, how how can they within their budget and within their time frame and from where they are regionally, how can they make more natural, healthier foods available to them? Well, you know, one thing that we have here in Georgia, which I love, is that you have grocery stores that have um, put themselves in a position to have more organic. You got local grocery stores. You got local growers here. You know, um, I live in a town where they have uh, farmer's markets. You can talk to them about where they get their vegetables. You can actually go there and find it cheaper at your farmer's markets. Mm. The organic, uh, you know, So product. farmer's markets are... Yeah. They are, oh, yeah. they are formidable alternatives. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. They have some oyster mushrooms that will blow your socks off. That's just me. <laughs> that, I know it's not chicken. I know it's not chicken. However, they you have a lot of good here. But even if you're not in Georgia and you're listening to this, you have a lot of stores who've bought into the organic um um, markets and, and so that made it a little cheaper but your farmers markets and you get to talk to your growers how many times you go to the store see something you didn't like and called up on the back of the product and and found out who the growers were mm -hmm. but when you go to the farmers market you have that benefit of knowing where it came from who harvested mm -hmm. what was the production so that's something we just got to keep educating ourselves about of how and where we find these things but they're here in your neighborhoods they are and even in a grocery store tip you know, fruits such as blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, mm -hmm. that's not expensive. The average person spend more money on fast food a day than you making a smoothie. Right. You could have a smoothie with kale, blueberries, strawberries, and raspberries. Have that for breakfast along with, you know, putting some minerals into your body such as a sea moss. Mm -hmm. And that's going to suppress your appetite and it's going to fill you up for half the day to where you're only eating one meal a day. Right. And then when you're eating something for dinner time, you could have such as a salad that's still lean. Right. You could put avocado on it, you know, all the veggies, and it's still filling, and it's not expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let me ask you. Tell us a little bit about the sea moss game. Oh, now the sea moss <laughs> game. <laughs> Share the sea what, what's right. the sea, What is the sea moss game? Sea moss is something. The sea moss <laughs> gang has turned into just a big family of people who wants to live better, be better, taking sea moss, mm. and they getting results from the product, and they love it. Mm. Yeah. So, and how did it become a, a somewhat of a cultural phenomenon? Well, it became very popular because um, Ray Schremer, one of my clients, Jimmy. Okay, yeah, I know, I know, young Jimmy. Yeah, young Jimmy, young Jimmy fell off the speaker. Remember when he hurt his leg? Yeah, okay. I got him walking in seven days. He went on tour with Nicki Minaj, yeah. and then it just went rapid after that. Now, share with the people some of uh, the more pertinent benefits of sea moss. Now, sea moss provides you with 92 of 102 minerals. 
So that puts the A complex, the B complex, the zinc, the calcium, get rid of mucus, inflammation, Mm -hmm. helps, you know, someone who has asthma or asthmatic, Mm -hmm. it'll get rid of the mucus out the lungs and they won't have asthma anymore. Or if your grandmother have arthritis Mm -hmm. in the joints, sea moss will help with that as well because of the zinc and the calcium. Mm -hmm. And if someone have high blood pressure, that'll help as well. So Mm. sea moss have tons of benefits. It's great diuretic. It burns belly fat. It's the untold superfood. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we don't, that's something that we all need to understand. How do you cook sea moss? (laughs) (laughs) you cook it? Very carefully. Right, very carefully. (laughs) And it grows in the ocean. It's not just anything. You can't just grow it on the the land. So you you have to go and catch it. You yes. have to go to the ocean, ocean. and gather it. Gather oh, yeah. it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And what, how is it prepared? Um, mm-hmm. Go ahead, Auntie. Well, you, you can have a couple of different ways. Um, we have it in um, gel form, and you can extract it just for the gel itself, and you can add it to um, smoothies. We have it where you can dry it. Mm. You can then process it out and capsule it. Uh, some people like it in the powder form. But um, those are the ways you usually find it. You'll find some Jamaican uh, companies that just add it to their drinks. Okay. Irish moss, you know, mm-hmm. and that's, you know, when we, you have the, you have sea moss, but sea moss is actually a blend. Mm-hmm. It's not just Irish moss. And, you know, Sabi coined that years ago. There's a video yeah. out there on YouTube where he falls to his knees. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And that's because of the strength, the calcium, amount mm-hmm. of calcium at his age. How could he fall to his knees on cement or some, a hard surface to... And, and get up and not have any problem. Right. CMOS. <laughs> CMOS gang. Now, he was the first, the OG. <laughs> yeah, for real. Now, does, does CMOS have a taste? Mm, yes. It has a very distinctive taste. Describe the taste. Is it, taste, it, it, is it nasty? That's what it yes, is. Yes, it okay. is nasty. Okay, cool. Yes. All right, so it's like taking medicine. Uh, a little stronger than that. But alcohol nasty too, and people still drink it. That's, That's true. true. You see That's what I'm true. saying? So, yeah. And they drink it not for the taste, but for the benefit. That's true. So if you could have, if you, if you could drink something for that has a bad taste for the benefit of, I guess being intoxicated, then you could drink something that don't taste good for the benefit of being more healthy, just That's as true. well. That's true. Um, now I, I just, you know, what I'm saying I like to. I like to balance the. I like to balance the discussion. I like to be able to try at least try to ask the questions that the people listening would want to ask you. Yes. Um, now, Isaiah, you have you you started I think eleven years ago reversing illnesses. Yes, sir. Um, well, what well, well, like okay, what when did you know you had the power to heal <laughs> <laughs> naturally? Um, I was about eighteen, and one of my closest friends called me crying on the phone and I'm thinking like you know his mom died his dad died or something like that he like man I have herpes I'm like you have what mm. he said I have herpes he said man my life is over I might as well commit suicide I, and then that's when I finally start you know telling people who my who my grandfather was because as a kid tip I couldn't tell you, yeah, my grandfather cured AIDS and cancer and diabetes. You'd be like, man, this dude is crazy. Right. So I was like, look, stop crying. We, I'm going to call my grandpa, and I'm going to take you to see him. He said, what's your grandpa going to do? I said, man, my grandfather cured. He like, you lying. I said, I'm going to tell my grandfather to cure you. And he was like, really? I'm like, yeah. So I took him to my grandfather. My grandfather said, you gonna help him get rid of this. Mm. I'm like, how am I gonna help him? You don't wanna heal. He said, you gonna help him. I'm gonna walk you through this. Mm. And he walked me through a tip. My friend got cured in three months. From then on, I've been helping people since, from diabetes to cancer to tumors to helping people reverse the uh, obesity. Tumors, you say? Tumors. So what was what, what was the first tumor? What was the first sign? Because tumors are synonymous with cancer. Yes. So you re, you reversed a cancerous tumor. Yes. Tell me the first time you did it. I was about twenty six, mm. and a gentleman was a boxer. And he had a tumor in his lungs, and he had a baby. Damn. 
he had a daughter. And he came to me, 26, I was 26, put him on a plant-based diet, reversed the, 20, the, the tumor in about a year. And the gentleman's still living today. We actually played basketball about a year ago together. And we reminisced about it because he thought he was going to die. Mm. And that's when I really fell in love with healing. And then one day, I'll never forget it. Um, I was watching your segment, uh, Grand Hustle, when you was doing the Stop Obesity campaign. Okay. Yeah. Right. And I was like, wow. That's, you know, I really thought that was amazing because our culture and our society is obese still yeah. till today. Yeah. And that's one of the highest diseases of the of our society. Right. So when I was watching your segment, it really inspired me. I went to my grandfather like, we need to create a weight loss program within our program. And he was like, what? I said, we need to do this. He said, you do it. He said, you should create it. Mm. I said, okay. I studied the books. I created the formula. Went to my grandfather. He said, now, how did you do this? I said, I read the books. Mm -hmm. He said, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he said. He said, this is really good. <laughs> he said, so you ready? I said, yeah. He said, you're going to have to get to your people. I said, yeah. He said, so it's no more about you. I said, okay. He said, do it. <sighs> And from 2009 tip, I helped over 10,000 people lose weight and keep it off on a plant-based diet and helping them with our weight loss package that we provide to this day. Mm. Now, Miss Miss Kelly, I know a big part of your initiative is using food as medicine. Could you please tell us how to do that? Please. Well, thank you for asking that question. <laughs> you know, how do we use that? Um, how do we use food as medicine? Well, it was the first thing here. Um, and one of the beautiful things about Jaw's gift to all of us is that he made grass, and it was good. Mm. And one of the things that I love about the plant-based diet is that, I'm going to just put that out there, if you don't buy any of our products, you still need to know how to eat. Yes. Right on. Because how you eat is the celebratory way that you show your body that you respect it. Right. So when I call food medicine, I, I you know, I feel chicken is a devil. A lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> so what's so bad about why you say that? Chicken, what's so bad about chicken? Chicken is a devil. Although I, I, I would so. tend to agree <laughs> with you. And, you know, people, they tell me to get the hell out of here all the time at the barbecue, cause I, you know what I'm saying, because I'm asking for fish. But why is chicken the devil? Listen, uh, people don't realize what inflammatory means. In definition, when it comes to the body, to be inflamed in your kidneys, your intestines, to be inflamed in your arteries means that you now have, open or, or major organs, you have now opened yourself up for diabetes, hypertension, uh, hormonal irregulations uh, for women, and I get these calls a lot, uh, hormone balance for women when they have high anxiety, uh, problems with having children. So when I say inflammatory, it means that you have lost the ability to do something because you are out of balance. Mm. So when it comes to what happened, I've taken women off of chicken for 30 days. I tell them, don't take my products. Not interested in you buying the products. I'm interested in you educating yourself about what you eat. Right. So you can get to me. However, you need to deal with you first. Mm. Get off chicken for 30 days and tell me how you feel. So a lot of women are no longer depressed. Mm. Their fibroids have sh shrunk. Uh, their, um, their bodies are acting in a way that seem more balanced in a way. They're thinking clearly. Mm. So when this started to happen and it became a routine, and, you know, I've been with my father, uh, you know, many, many years and watched this happen. Right. I was convinced then. I am convinced now that chicken is the devil. <laughs> so, and those women gave me the feedback. It wasn't love that I was giving them. It was what they brought back and told me how they felt. Right. So with that being said, when you find out that chicken is inflammatory, what does that mean? I'm telling you, it means disease. 
Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, since November 2016, I done gave up. You know, I don't eat no. I, I only do fish. I've been a pescatarian since then. That's excellent. Um, although I do cheat, like, you know, every now and again on Thanksgiving and Christmas with some turkey. <laughs> um, but, I mean, what does dinner look like at the Bowman house? You know, like how, like what, how, like what exactly on Thanksgiving? Let's if you have holiday dinner, plant based giving, plant based giving. <laughs> so what? <laughs> okay, so what's the main dish? <laughs> the main dish should be maybe uh, some some zucchini, uh, portobello mushrooms, something with portobello mushrooms, quinoa, uh-huh. um, maybe some bell peppers, onions. Uh, amaranth greens, right. dandelion greens, uh, squash. What is an amaranth green? Amaranth greens are really good. And you guys, a uh, shout out to Atlanta because <laughs> you guys, it's a place called. Uh, you talking about collard greens, man? No. Amaranth <laughs> greens are much better. Has a better taste. Okay. Um, have more minerals. Okay. And it's really good. Dandelion what? greens are really good as well. Where do you get amaranth and dandelion greens from? Um, it was a place called Mangoes out here. Mm. Mangoes, yeah, they have the best amaranth greens over there. Now I, I could and just that's in Atlanta. I could just see somebody right here. I could see somebody right now listening and saying, "Man, that should sound nasty." So <laughs> how so how do you flavor your plant based diet to the point where it will be just as pleasing to the palate. Well, one of the people who, um, one of the cultures that get it right every time, and you can look at um, YouTube for different seasonings, but I love the Ethiopian way of, you have to layer your seasonings. Mm. Uh, When you go to someplace like Louisiana, and they layer their seasonings to come up with something beautiful. If you want to know, you can know. Mm. And, and and it's different because you have to think in the mind of this. Here we go. I'm not looking to feed you for today. I'm looking for you to eat to live because this is what happens. We die by default. Mm. We feed ourselves this stuff, macaroni and cheese. We feed ourselves turkey. We feed ourselves these things. Mm-hmm. We say it's love, but we die of this very food. Mm. Was that love in the end? Mm. Did it equal love? So my question to you here is, when are we going to stop dying by default? When are we going to stop having this diet, uh, dietary insanity? We eat the same meals, but we want a different Result. outlook. Yeah. That's not love. That's not love, too. So I can't tell you that that day of Thanksgiving, I particularly have Thanksgiving for my friends, family, and loved ones every day. Okay. I don't have a holiday meal or a principle. The only principle we have mm-hmm. is sea moss in, in our families, but the principle is to feed our bodies. Right. So whatever the principle is on that table, it must be alkaline. It must be good for the body because that's love. That's love. And your temple is, if, if you want to love others, you better love yourself with your food. Mm. Because, I, listen, I've been at a, a holiday event, and by the time you got through half that plate, some of them are asleep. <laughs> <laughs> now we speak uh i just heard you speak of an alkaline diet could you please explain to the to the listeners why it's beneficial when you think about an alkaline diet you have uh two things here you have acid and alkaline acid means that uh you are at a state of living that's below standard for healing in the body an alkaline diet is above 7.0 which disease cannot live in an alkaline environment which you're more balanced and your body is running um, to where it is uh, being able to cleanse, nourish, and rebuild and keep that immune system up to where disease cannot live because of what you're fueling it with. Right. So when you look at it like that, you want to find foods higher on that list. There's a lot of foods out here, but what are the ones that are royal for the body to do those things? Because, again, the goal is to eat to live. Mm-hmm. The goal is not to just eat right. and be right. satisfied by belly. Right. It is to be fueled Nourished. and lived. Yeah, because think Nourished. about it, in our communities, who got insurance? And if it is it good? So right. we don't want to die by default. We want to try and do the best. So we want to find those vegetables and fruits that are higher on that alkalinity level. Those royal uh, ancient grains that he's talking about, like kamut, like amaranth, like mm. uh, quinoa. We want to find those that heal. Mm. 
So in that way, we're able to do that job every day. We think clearer. We're much better. We're more efficient. We're more effective. Mm. So you want to find those foods that are higher on that list. There's no judgment here. And are there days where we cheat? Are there days where we have an off day? Well, if you can find me one person who was born 100% perfect, I would question that because we all have those areas, right? Right. We have those areas. But when you think about it, if, in fact, you have a cheat day, it's great to have that day where you have something you like. But it's better that the majority of your diet can take care of that one day or right. those two days. So right. you should be able to take care of that waste without a problem. Yeah, I think that, you know, uh, the key to life is moderation. moderation. There you go. You, you know what I'm saying? There so, you go. You know, we all do things, right? Yeah. But doing things moderately will, you know, uh, progressively help you better the outcome. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's better to have a cheat day than just to accept this diet for yourself on a permanent basis. Yeah, your cheat day is every day when you eat like that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Now, one thing now that... One thing that um, interests me, uh, well, actually, two things. So in the 80s, when charges were brought on Dr. Sabi, he was uh, arrested and and in prison uh, while he had to build the case for himself with no counsel, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, And what exactly were they alleging that he that he 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 done to break the law yeah well those two counts of practicing medicine without a license is what they were pushing and why like what like t- so he put out an ad in the paper and right. then and then came the charges yeah that he was blatantly um practicing uh unlawful medicine mm-hmm. and that he was using uh false information to fool the public into thinking that he was a doctor because remember Dr. Sabi was a name that was given to him and Mm. he kept it and he wasn't running from it he raised us with something that was important and that's courage that's right and so he walked in it and so with that being said you cannot tell him that it was not the truth because it healed him first and then it healed others Mm. so at that time when that was going you know going on it was such a frenzy for New York because New York State, the Supreme Court was on him to do the right thing and to say that this is what he was doing and to jail him. But mm. that wasn't the case. Right. And that was what their case was built on. How did he prove himself innocent? Wow. Well, the beautiful thing was he didn't come alone. He didn't have uh, a whole bunch of lawyers in back of him. He didn't mm. have a lot of money. But what he had was knowledge. Mm. And he had his clientele who had, just like my nephew's talking about, who had those... Um, positive results with their health Mm -hmm. they had results that they brought in from their doctors from the doctors that they that they uh, accused him of being a doctor and uh or not a doctor a scam and practicing medicine well their particular doctors gave them their results the the clients that came in and they were negative Mm. when they came in with uh both positive and negative results and showed that their life had been altered in a positive way and that they were undetected in ways and that uh, they no longer had the particular diseases that they went to their doctors for with the help of Dr. Sabi. Mm, he was acquitted of, of all charges. All, all charges. charges. Walked away, uh, gathered all of us together, and um, talked about the truth, mm. about life, and walking in the truth. And because of that, we're here today. That's amazing. Uh, now, cut to in 2016 uh, in Honduras, he was arrested and charged for money laundering. Uh, what was the basis of that, of those uh, uh, allegations? Well, you know, my grandfather for years and years, you know, always walked around with a lot of money because in certain countries, when we gather in these herbs, and there's a village who have something that we need, mm. he's going to bless them with cash. You mm-hmm. can't swipe a credit card or there's no cash shops or Venmo. Right. So for years and years, that's something that he did. So, you know, in 2016, when they locked him up, 
they found fifty thousand dollars on him. Mm-hmm. My grandfather never wanted to embezzle money. He's a healer, right? So they locked him up, and in Honduras, the prison is horrific. You know, it's a it's a very you know horrific place. So over there, it's different. An eighty year old man in a prison in the He's going to county jail at 80 years old. He can die there. Right. So an 80-year-old man going to prison died. My grandfather died in a prison. And the government didn't kill him. It wasn't any foul play. He died in a prison because he didn't want to comply to eating the food and drinking the water Mm. because of his lifestyle. You have a man that eat a certain way. Eat it, take his herbs and live this way, then you go to jail. You taking him out of his element, then what would you do? Yeah, basically, so his loyalty to his diet and his lifestyle and him not being able to maintain that within the environment and the conditions of the prison is what causes untimely demise. Yes, sir. Mm. I mean, now, there was a documentary uh, in production that that Nip, that Nip told me about personally and he also shared it with the world. Um, is that documentary still in production? Yes, the documentary is still in production. Um, it'll be coming out very soon. Oh, awesome, awesome. And Nick Cannon and the Bowman family are still working on that as we speak. Okay. I think it's important for the generation to know um, not only who Dr. Sabi was, but what he was able to do to help others and how so many people higher up didn't want him to do it. Like that, Like when you say courage, okay, if you live in the ghetto, all right, and you got a drug dealer in your neighborhood. The drug dealer usually going, you know what I'm saying, control all the comings and goings and the doings and not doings. If you cross that drug dealer, you're gonna be, it's going to be a pretty tough time for you in the neighborhood. Right. That drug dealer probably worth, he probably worth maybe, you know, 100000 200000 if he's lucky, maybe a million. Okay, so imagine if the drug dealer was worth... 50, 60 billion, okay? So if the drug dealer worth 50, 60 billion and you cutting in on his profits, imagine how dangerous that would be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that's the context that we have to consider the bravery right. of Dr. Sabi. Um, I mean, what are the challenges that you've, encounter on your journey after he's passed? What are the things that you're trying to accomplish that you feel like doors are being slammed and obstacles are being put in front of you? Well, you have to understand something. The fact that my grandfather never been nominated for a Nobel's Peace Prize. He's never been to, we never been nominated at any award show. And my grandfather have worked with every celebrity just about and healed so many Mm. and the only person that really had a heart to talk about my grandfather was Lisa Left Eye Lopez Mm. and everyone else has just been silent now there's a couple people that you know blessed our family you know with different things Mm -hmm. but as far as recognition no my grandfather never really got the recognition he deserved Mm. And I just feel like, you know, obtaining this legacy, there's obstacles. Look at, you know, Instagram. Mm. Everyone claimed to be the Bowman family. Right. And, you know, to try to obtain some type of capital gain. And it's sad. And my grandfather, I tell people every day, if he was to pop up today, would you be still doing what you're doing? Because I'll still be saving lives and carry on the legacy of our family because it's needed for our society. It, it is needed. 
It is needed. And um, when you say that a big businessman can come along and want to keep his money and he, uh, you know, when people want to keep that money in their pocket, anybody who comes against that particular entity yeah. will find uh, ways to challenge that situation. They're calling that knocking the hustle. You know what I'm saying? So, knocking the hustle. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Show stopping the money, you okay. know. Right. And so for him, uh, he was built off one thing. And that was the ability to believe in forward movement. Right. And by that, he taught his children. Right. And he instilled that in us. And just because somebody tells you you can't doesn't mean that you have the problem. It's them. Right on. And you'll have the problem if you decide to accept it. And that makes you sick, too. Right. So with that being said, the journey of Dr. Sabi was going to happen or we wouldn't be talking about it today. So the community has celebrated Dr. Sabi. Uh, we celebrate Dr. Sabi. And for those reasons, I think we'll continue to talk about him mm. because the name just doesn't seem to be going away. Right. I mean, I want to thank you both for contributing your knowledge, wisdom, um, and awareness of your, your grandfather and your father's teachings to this generation because... You guys could selfishly keep that within your family and kind of, you know, hold on to the information and pass it to your nieces, nephews, cousins, sons, daughters, and grandchildren. Selfishly, right. making sure your family is healed and everyone else can have to get it how they live. Y'all, like, y'all don't have to offer right. this information. Y'all don't have to be forthcoming right. with these teachings. So I appreciate that. Hey. Thank you. We Thank appreciate you. being appreciate here. It. Nature needs heroes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we get together, you giggle at me. <laughs> I mean, hey, listen, because man, you know what I'm saying. You sound, you sound like a superhero. I, like, like when you talk, it kind of sound like, you know, a cool character on Captain Planet. That's what, yeah. you know what I'm saying. If you remember Captain Planet right. from back in the day, yeah. you know, and, and and but but she mean business. She not, not you know, she not capping, right. and she has a, a very distinguished stern serious no nonsense look about it so when she say these things i know that you mean them i mean them every day I know and i miss dr sabi every day i mean man i wish i would have had a chance to meet him well you know me so you know him <laughs> right on That's what's uh could you please give people uh some insight on the epidemic of seizures now, for a lot of different reasons, uh, some of which being the opioid crisis, mm. um, whether it's lean or Percocets or, you know, oxys, whatever it is, um, opioids are causing more and more and more of us to have seizures. Mm -hmm. And also other things, other things like mold, yeah. you know, just you know other and also epilepsy um how can we reduce or avoid seizures within our community that's a good question because it is in our communities yeah it's deep in there that's right. a great question one of the things we got to look at is what is a food source like you said in the beginning in our neighborhoods what are we feeding each other what are we listening to that would uh, perpetuate this form of lifestyle that we have come to a point of low nutrition and high disease. Mm. So again, I, I speak to you about that acidic level and those alkaline levels of the body. So when you're acidic, anything can happen. But when you're taking in anything chemical, you spoke of Percocet. Mm. Uh, Percocet, uh, if you know anything about Percocet, it's a uh, narcotic and um, uh, and then it, it has another analgesic um, attached to it, I think acetaminophen. And when you are taking those at large amounts, mm -hmm. if you're doing that, you know, I heard a, uh, a recent rap about it. I didn't even know they was rapping about it like that. But it shouldn't be glorified because those chemical reactions that you don't know they'll cause, for temporary, mm -hmm. they seem to be satisfactory. 
But because it's cheap, it's in our neighborhoods. Uh, you spoke of lean. I believe that we can find that at our local grocery stores. We can mix some stuff together to make things, mm. uh, you know, the chemical compound of it all. Now these folk, they want high tech and uh, they activists. Want that. They, yeah, want they, want that. <laughs> they want They want the, the, the yellow, green, purple, and red. Look right. at you that. Know what I'm saying? And so for that reason, we got to look at what we're mineralizing our body with and what are we... Um, putting in our bodies that's real toxic that's going to keep that level of toxicity in our bodies to cause those reactions a lot of people want to blame uh you know the lifestyles of rappers that's not it that's not it. it's our thinking about what we consider to be calming to the body we've lost the ability to have uh low anxiety mm. uh levels of food sources we have large amounts of fried foods in our neighborhoods, processed foods, and it makes us think a certain way. Right. So when we add these chemicals in, it, the chemicals are not added in because we just need them in this entertainment. It's for a situation. Mm -hmm. See, the first situation is we have an acidic body. We're looking for relief. Right. So our forms of getting this relief are just out of control. What can we do? We got to go back to that pantry. We got to go into our neighborhoods and look at what, what's there and say, do we want to keep it this way? Do we want to keep thinking that this is okay? Mm. And the answer is no. The answer is definitely no. Right on. We got to do better. Right. We want our kids to do better, then we must do better. We want them to survive in school. The rates of kids dropping out is not by chance. We got to look at what we're doing. Mm. And we got to hold those chemicals responsible. But we got to stop taking them. But then we have to hold the rappers accountable for it rapping about lean just about every rapper has a cup in his hand and who's looking at them the next generation the 15 year old kids drinking lean getting seizures it's because of the in chemical balance you know everybody like you said to green red and yellow they mix in lean with soda another acidic substance that create disease so when you get this chemical imbalance in the brain and you have a seizure it's because of the lean so if we could get our rappers to stop glorifying that not gonna happen let's let <laughs> <laughs> so let's no, i mean but you know, at least we've we been extremely ambitious <laughs> uh, but what we can do is <laughs> You know, we could put the information out right. there. And eventually, you know, maybe one, maybe two, maybe a few will hear and they'll understand. But can the cycle of consistent seizures be broken? Yes. Oh, yeah, it can. Oh, yeah, be. for sure. Yeah. How, how does one, what would be, if there are, if there is no drugs involved, mm -hmm. there are no, like, there's no lean, there's no perks, you know what I mean? Uh, can the cycle, how does the cycle of consistent seizure, how is it broken? plant-based diet we have to cleanse the body on an intercellular level so we have to go inside mm. we're cleansing each cell from the lymphatic system the immune system the digestive system mm. and then we have to attack the central nervous system so it could get to the brain so we could remove some of the plaque, the mucus, and the inflammation that's on the brain. Mm -hmm. So it could give you a great oxygen flow so you won't have any more seizures. Mm. But how do we do that? A plant-based diet and sea moss. Right. Yes. Because, see. I should have known sea moss was the answer. <laughs> I should have known. Yeah, because sea moss is one of the components because of the fact that it targets the central nervous system. And once it targets the central nervous system, then that attacks the brain. Oxygen goes to the f brain. There's no more seizures. Mm. Yeah, but it also it starts with a plant-based diet. Now, uh, I appreciate that because I personally need that information for uh, a family member of mine. Okay. Um, now, Miss Bowman, you are and have been, among other things, an herbalist. Uh, you're not. Amongst other things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's talk about one very, 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 very popular herb that the culture <laughs> loves. Uh, so, 
how does marijuana and the use of marijuana, smoking, ingesting, however, how is how does it affect the body? And can a consistent intake of marijuana be maintained and still live healthy? Well, you know, you brought up a good point. Uh, when you talk about seizures, there has been medical studies to where the plant itself has been extracted in a way to where they've um, extracted the THC and they have used it to benefit seizures. Mm. There's a lot of study, and that goes um, pretty much back to the 60s and 70s, and they also tried mushrooms and psychedelic treatments of mm -hmm. this. So they were going natural. They were going plant-based, if, if you will. Um, but when you talk about, are we speaking of smoking? Yes. Now, when you smoke something, think about this. It changes the molecular structure, okay. and you're inhaling that into your lungs. Okay. So that's a situation to where those who smoke mm -hmm. have to deal with that particular kind of residual. Uh, and what I mean by that is that that molecular structure has now changed, so the best part of the plant is gone, hmm. uh, to some extent. <laughs> <laughs> For those who are listening, I'm I'm just being honest. So when you use that plant in another way, there are benefits. Um, there have been extractions, like I said, from that particular plant to do many beneficial things. Mm -hmm. However, but smoking something, you lighten it up, changes the structure. So it may give you something, but the benefits of the plant itself, there's far more mm -hmm. that people don't talk about um, that we don't see. But I think it's coming. I mean, okay. we're at, in America, I think we're talking about some really great things that help um, those who have seizures, those mm -hmm. who have different ailments, uh, pain levels. Right. I've known it. Um, to help cancer patients mm -hmm. in pain and in different different ways. So, but smoking in general, that is one way. That's one option for some. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking for the total benefit of the plant, because I'm for the plant, I'm looking at plant based right. information here. Right. And so, when you talk about what it does aside from that, there are so many more benefits that we we need to as a community talk about right. and and educate ourselves about. Um, so, I I'm one who had a father who could smoke six in a row uh, and yeah. smoke Oh, Dr. Saban smoked. Oh, yeah, my grandfather um, smoked. See, I was, yeah. I was looking at Isaiah because he looked like he, he's like he well, wanted he to say something. Well, he would be the expert yeah. on Isaiah this. Isaiah so something gonna, to say. I'm going to pass it on. We had <laughs> no. been, we was, you know, outside before we came in, we were comparing uh, herbs with one another. Yeah. You know <laughs> <laughs> so with my grandfather, yes, my grandfather did smoke, and he's probably smoking right now, rest in peace. So, <laughs> um, he smoked a lot, but... He smoked clean. It wasn't something that he abused. It was clean. He smoked out of zigzags, you know, something raw, something natural. Right. Now, you know, today's time, the backwood mm -hmm. is one of the highly promoted substance that people use, and it's yeah. not good, you know, for the natural essence of the marijuana because it takes down... Like Monty said, it's going to lower it to where are you getting this tobacco? Mm. And then now you're getting addicted to the nicotine. Mm. And that nicotine causes a nasty lung infection. Got you. Which is not good for the body. Now, I know raw papers and uh, joint papers, zigzags as you yeah. call them. I know those are the most holistic way to go. Yes. But it, but just, just should you want to choose some form of uh, a more cigar-based? What was the best blunt to buy? I was trying to find the, like a politically correct way to say it. <laughs> 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 so um, what's the best blunt to buy? I tell people the hemp wraps. The you know they have vegan wraps now. Okay, that's. You know, strictly hemp. Um, there's the La Palma leaf that's okay. natural. That's made by, um, you know, you can use La Palma. That's really good. But stay away from backwoods. It's mm. very harmful and detrimental. And it's not good to the Mary Jane. You're really abusing your Mary Jane when you put it in something like that. Yeah, so yeah. you're fucking up the gas, basically. Yeah, you're you messing say. it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I know my little cousin Shard don't want to hear that. He, you know what I'm saying? Shard the God, he's a backwood burner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, again, I want, okay, I want to give you guys the opportunity. Please tell everyone where they could find you so they could benefit from your, uh, just your unspeakable wisdom. Okay, so we have a store here, and we're at um, 675 Metropolitan Parkway, and that's in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, you can also reach, you can reach me at Sabie's Daughters LLC um, on IG and sabiesdaughters.com to see the product line and also my nephew's product line. You can reach me at Dietary Resolutions. And like Monty said, we do have a store here that's, we're catering to the community, mm -hmm. you know, let's get healthy, Atlanta, and reach out to Dr. Sabie's Daughters LLC and Let's get healthy, Elena, truly. Man, and I thank you. Thank you both so much for coming. Um, I'm sure that the listeners will have several questions that, you know, as I see you in our, in our travels, I will definitely be sure to ask and deliver your, your, your answers to them. Now, we have a tradition here. <clears throat> tradition here expeditiously is the word of the week. Um, let's see here. Now, the word of the week today, the word usually is indicative of the discussion we were having or the guests. Um, mm, the word I choose today is omnipotent. Omnipotent, having unlimited power, able to do anything. Um, now, I am challenged with using omnipotent in a sentence now so that people could go to work or go to school tomorrow and pretend they knew it their whole life. Uh, giving us no credit at all, might I add. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Through natural holistic means, Dr. Sabi and the Bowman family has proven to be omnipotent mm -hmm. to the culture. And so it is. Wow. Right on. Well, thank we you, guys. That. Truly. Thank you, guys, uh, so much. Thank you uh, for having us. You guys are always welcome here or the Trap Music Museum. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, Wherever you want to pull that. up. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I appreciate all. that. Thank you. Uh, I can't thank you enough. It's been a blast. And once again, guys, Peace. this is Expeditiously. Peace and love, Seamoss Gang. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.